it's a Scorpion matchup. Italy versus Brazil. It's a mirror game. Uh, we've been jumping after a few turns. I think it's two turns. Uh, let me check that. Yeah, we're at the end of the first turn, actually. Um, Tico Phone, if I'm not mistaken, is playing for Brazil, and he has opened with two Truth Seekers. I'm not that fond of this opening, because uh, it means your opponent is going to be able to wave the Scorpion them, so it removes some dead cards from his hand. And additionally, of course, you're going to draw two cards, four cards, but he's also going to draw four cards. And that uh, is kind of a problem, because here both players are playing the same kind of deck, uh, relying on backhanded complements and display of power. Um, if I were uh, the Brazilian player, I, I would feel a bit naked, because I have like only four characters, and that means that my uh, my opponent is going to have an uh, easier time passing. So yeah, t Falcon is Brazilian player. We'll have easier time passing before I do during uh, Tinasty Fates, which potentially is going to negate quite a lot of fate. So I will not go through the list because the, the matches already started and I'm going to try to catch up on what's happening. So um, Perek is going with Seeker of Knowledge, so that's one of his influence uh, cards in the deck. Um, he's going for Water Ring, he might decide to resolve air instead. And that's political, so he has one skill, definitely not a break anyway. He's from Pilgrimage and Abandoning Honor. Abandoning Honor is a rather farmable province if you're careful enough not to break it. Um, or to break it with only Scorpion characters in place, so, because they're much harder to dishonor uh, for a Scorpion opponent, because of the way of the Scorpion doesn't work on them. Uh, his opponent has found Midnight Revels and Secret Cash. Secret Cash is definitely a province you don't want to bounce off multiple times. Revels is fine if you can ensure you have less cost amongst your character than your opponent. So it's it's it might be a bit tricky, but it's much better to go for than Secret Cash. So that might be a farmable province if he buys accordingly. Um, they are of course both of the Keeper of Air because that's the backhanded complement. These are all decks on both sides. Um, we have a palace on Tikofen side, which is like definitely very good, especially sitting on top of Pilgrimage, which means it's like a forever standing palace, more or less in that matchup, because none of the players are going to want to go for break unless they have a huge advantage. Um, I would say in terms of provinces, Pudok is a bit better off because he's found a almost safely farmable one. Uh, he's going to get the favor also out of his turn because of the truth, the founding diplomat and his opponent doesn't have a... Uh, none of them are running clouds, so th he has no answer to that founding diplomat living play. Damn. Uh, it seems he has uh, issues triggering the airing. I mean, he has to click on it, but maybe it doesn't work properly. I'll just let people know that I jumped on the streaming of that one so that they can uh, they can catch it. Uh, let me just check how I should do that. I had the link somewhere. Before, yeah, there it is. So I'm just gonna put that back, change the title. So it's Italy Scorpion versus Brazil Scorpion. Yep, there we are. Okay, so we're back on the on the stream. Um. So yeah, end of turn, uh, four draw from the both uh, seekers living truth seekers living play on both sides. So that's actually you like the truth seeker getting you cards later in the game because the idea is that it should fetch you your back and it complement to close out the game. In this situation, I'm really not sure it's good for you for, uh, that it fires because your opponent probably has a slightly better conflict uh, deck to face yours because if it includes more conflict characters. On the flip, we see on one side favorable ground and Imperial Storehouse to the city, so it's just like a buy and a pass, I guess. And Tikofon has to answer that because he has fewer characters in conflict, so maybe none of them in hand. 
uh, it should, yeah, he's buying the Liar, he's very likely also going to buy the Albertis because, like, you have absolutely no reason not to do at that point. Yeah, I might even have put more than one fade on it, honestly. Because, like, it's it's just such a good card. It's going to get you draws, and you already have seven fades. Like, I don't think one less is going to hurt you a lot, unless you plan to play that Founding Diplomat. In this matchup, it's actually pretty important. So if you think you're going to have trouble getting that favor back, um, let me check if he has some centures. Yeah, you run three of them. And, and his opponent runs only one. So actually depriving his opponent of the century isn't that important, but having it himself is crucial. He has the palace though, so yeah, I don't think you buy that diplomat because you're gonna have the century no matter what. You, you're gonna have the favor very, very likely uh, after that round. Uh, just having a knife with lists. Yeah, there is one swim and it's fate risk than death. And here we have What's the restricted here? Oh, yeah, yeah, Forged Edict. So actually, uh, that's why he has only one sensor. It's because he is on the Forged Edict. edict. So you need to have the favor so that you can actually use your fate to risk and death. Otherwise, you're at risk of having them edicted, which is like really, really bad. So both bid one. Uh, I guess, yeah, they want to... They, they are both at five, so none of them want... At six, sorry, so none of them want to take the risk of like bidding higher with the opponent is honoring them. It's it's a really, really once you're at six against this honor scorpion, you're like already in the danger zone. So you really don't want to give your opponent an additional grasp on you to get that victory of by dishonoring you. Yeah, using the storehouse, I mean that's nothing very special on that one. Trying to get the chat room up. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, both of them passed the Conflict pre conflict action. We're gonna have a near conflict from Pedocris first player, likely going to the manipul with the manipulator so that the seeker of knowledge can still pressure on airing later. Also, denies the airing from his opponent, so that's pretty good. Uh, going on a back on a burning manor, as I said, it's, it's a pretty farmable province now. And unless your opponent forces you to break it, you're going to be careful not to break it yourself. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, they, they, he's running no cat and maybe a bonsai could do this, could do it, but I'm, yeah, he has two of these. So actually, he has a bonsai. You might be tempted to play it on the manipulator so that he breaks the abandoning honor. You discard the seeker of knowledge. You both have five honor, and then you can go. I think I think void. Oh yeah, that's not too good. Uh, it gives you a fate, which is good because like you will turn on fate on your opponents. I'm not sure you want to play a bonsai. Yeah, playing a bonsai here actually is good because it's going to force your opponent. Oh, yeah, but he has a favorable ground. So what what's going to happen if you play a bonsai? It's just it's going to move out because like, you don't want to break the favorable province. Without the favorable ground, that, have, that would have been a decent move because then you would have killed the Seeker of Knowledge and you would have forced your opponent to go into another province. And... Both of the province are very likely upholding authority, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's obviously the secret cache. Auto oh, cache is under the stronghold. Uh, no, no, secret cache. It doesn't make sense to put it under the stronghold in this matchup. So it's rebels under the stronghold, uh, yeah, and upholding authority aside, very likely. Or maybe just get. No, I, th I think that's the correct play. Like, you get rid of the farmable revels by putting it under the stronghold. You've got three threatening unbreak provinces that are abandoning honor and upholding authority in the mirror. Then you've got the pilgrimage that negates the ring effect because all this mirror revolves, about winning, revolves around winning rings and being economically efficient. And then you've got the cash on which your opponent is obviously never going to want to go again. 
So I don't know what. Yeah, we see a collector going for product. It's not. It's not too good in the sense that he doesn't have an attachment to remove. But obviously in this matchup, he he will. It's a good insurance against the mark of shame, actually. But apart from that, that's pretty much everything. Uh, he's just using it here as a character because his opponent did play, as I said, he did play the bonsai. So you use the favorable ground to get your character out of that conflict because you don't really don't want to break that abandoning and all. Like if you do, your seeker of knowledge dies, and your opponent has like a an open to conflict turn to do whatever he wants. Of course, you might have like conflict character as hand, but, but it's still bad because essentially it removes one of the farmable provinces you found. And the row of uh, Tikofon is like much harder to farm that than the one of Pudok. So he, Pudok probably like definitely does not want to get that province broken. I I wouldn't if I were him. So yeah, we saw a box trigger to have his opponent losing one honor from uh, because the the bonsai kick allowed him to go below. He played Banzai on his opponent, kicked it so that he would go below and then trigger his box to have his opponent losing one honor. Uh, he's displaying. Um, yeah, I don't think that's good, honestly. Because if that, yeah, yeah, there, there is the backhanded threat, though. There is the backhanded threat. Like, if his opponent has backhanded three times, no game is over. But we see him passing, so it's probably not the case. However, if he can get the Seeker of Knowledge firing like one ring as air, his opponent is going to be at least a two honor. And two backhanded no, we're almost half the deck, so it's not like completely impossible. Who are they both so low? Um, that's a very good question, actually. A lot of an opposed conflict, if I remember correctly. Let me check that. Yeah, that's it. They, they pressured a lot on early, and there was a lot of undefended conflicts. They exchanged uh, box triggers, and like one into the others that went to, into that. Um, also, um, Pedag did use airing multiple times because of the secure of knowledge. So we see a phoning diplomat going mil military void. Um, I think it's the only reasonable play because you're going to scoot something and you don't want to break um, upholding authority by mistake here. So you want to go with a character that doesn't have free strength. So you would go with the phoning diplomats. Your opponent also has only political left. So it allows your dash character to defend if you want. No, no, I think that's a mistake. Go going with the liar is probably a mistake because. If you if you find if you find like shameful or pilgrimage, uh, I don't know if he's on shameful or pilgrimage actually. Uh, shameful. So if you find shameful, you're not gonna break it because your opponent's going to defend honor himself, dishonor you. And if you find something worse, which is upholding, then you're gonna break it, and you really don't want that in the mirror. So you want to go with the phoning in military. Yeah. Also, your opponent only has, only has political left, and you have political left after that. So you actually have one character to defend, the liar. And then you have another um, political. Ah, yeah, yeah. You have the 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 Alibertist to to go for your second book. Going back on the secret cache is a no full choice. Like I I I think that's just not good. Like you have two provinces that might be shameful display, and I think upholding authority. Let me check that. Yeah, it's upholding authority and shameful display. Like. Worst case, it could be a meditation if like something is under the box, but I really don't think so. So I, I definitely think going back onto the secret cache is a huge mistake. And if you do, you might go political because yeah, you, like, why do you go there if you don't want to break it? You're not going to farm that province. It's just like straight a very bad idea. And when you are at free honor, like you just 
giving your opponent the chance to get that third backhanded. That would just straight kill you. Yeah, for shame. So if he has another one, he will for shame you again and you will be dishonored. And at the end of the turn, you're very likely dead. I understand the greed to go on the void ring, but I, I think going fire here would have been much better. And you would have honored one of your characters that would be a living play at the end of the turn. Uh, that would have given you like just this small little additional buffer to stay alive. Because right now your opponent has the possibility to go with the Seeker of Knowledge for an air ring. And you're just at three. And that's just not good. It's actually terrible. I think I think you're in a super bad spot there. You gave both player four cards with those, those two truth seeker at the beginning of the game first turn, and I understand you hadn't the ability to play much stuff, especially because you had only four uh, conflict characters in your deck, so you couldn't really take the risk that you drew none of them. But that's yeah. There comes a mark of shame. Um, not sure it's a good play on the Goblin, honestly. Like, he's still winning because it's military. Uh, maybe it's just like to have a Dishonor on next turn. Oh, okay, D yeah. Assassination to discard the Goblin. So now we're going to probably see backhanded going on. It's a bit expensive, but if you lose, if you win the game because of it, then, then it's perfectly fine. That might tell that uh, actually it's possible that he got either the mark of shame, the assassination, or backhanded on on the secret cash trigger. And if it's the if it's the case that so huge feels bad for having attacked this secret cash, there yeah. So what's likely going to happen is that end of yeah he's not even he might not even need the backhanded because now. The founding diplomat is going to leave at the end of the turn. You're going to lose one honor, and you will have lost one from the Seeker of Knowledge before if you don't defend that conflict properly. And if he has another four shame, like you, you, you're you going to be in trouble because he's going to attack with the Seeker of Knowledge and four shame you. And, and whether you bow, oh yeah, there comes the backhanded. I, I think that's game. I think there is like maybe five to ten different lines of play where you lose the game here as Tikofon. Yeah, so going back on the down, that's the game. Yeah, so even going fire here wouldn't have changed anything, but going on this on the secret cache was definitely a very bad idea. Uh, I'm just gonna ask like what was I'm really interested in too. I think Depends what he took, but I'm really curious. I wanted to know what, what did he get from that. I think situation was very bad already anyway. But that attack on the secret cache was probably probably just it sealed the game. Okay, I'm not sure I understand what he. Uh, no problem, Talon. I just. I'm sorry I jumped in a, a little bit late. Well, that was a quite quick game. I'm gonna drop there and maybe catch another game after that if anyone needs. Otherwise, have a nice evening.